Lovely morning, we've come to the canal and this time I have brought my dad and my daughter and we're going to try tackling that bridge and its beautiful reflections ahead um, and we're going to try different materials. I know my, my daughter's absolutely keen on using felt pens and my father's going to be using, um, dad what are you using? Oil pastels. Oil pastels <laughs> and I'm going to be using chalk pastels and we'll see how we get on. This is live, live artwork out in the countryside so it could be interesting. So dad, these little old plastic things, you said they were viewfinders. I can see why you like them. They're a bit archaic, aren't they? Yeah, well, they are. These, uh, these frames go back to uh, colour negatives from uh, back in the 1960s, 70s, but they are a proportion, so they fit usually well onto your uh, proportion for your sketchbooks. And uh, I'm framing up the view, deciding what I want to include, what I want to leave out and uh, that helps me make a start. I'm using oil pastels. They're very different to dry pastels in as much that some of them are semi-transparent. Right. Uh, so uh, I'm using oil pastels. Uh, these are quite different in truth to dry pastels in as much that some of them are slightly transparent. And uh, for that reason, I like to use white paper rather than the toned paper, the coloured paper that dry pastels uh, artists often prefer. Uh, the white paper sh shines through the transparency of some of the pastels and makes them glow even more. If I did it on a coloured paper, it, it wouldn't glow as much. So yeah, that's what I'm going to start with. I've uh, used my viewfinder to choose what I want to include. And my first move is always to put the big shapes in first. I don't want to start doing details before before I've got the main composition as I want it. So there's the top of the bridge and uh, approximately, I'm doing it lightly so I can cover it all up uh, as I correct it, as I draw into it. And uh, so that's approximately the composition there. This is echoed down here in the reflection of the water. We've got the towpath coming through the bridge there. And we've got the bank over there, and the reeds, and the bushes. Now, I do have a problem with this view, which is this area here is not very interesting. So I'm going to cheat. I'm going to move the pub over a bit, a bit, a bit further, perhaps. And so there we are. There's the pub and its chimney coming up there. And I'm going to make a little more of the tree behind the pub and that makes a much more interesting skyline than what I'm in truth seeing. So this is artistic license as we call it. And there we are. I have almost the essentials. Now I wouldn't dream of doing any detail until I there we are, a tree coming. I wouldn't dream of doing any detail until I was happy with how I'd break, broken up the, the page. But I, I'm quite happy with that. The pub, as a result of my moving it, is going to appear slightly through the arch there, and I will move some of the things seen through the arch just over a bit. So what are you, what are you doing there then, Orla? I'm using metallic pencils because they have the right colours for some greenery. Well, which viewpoint are you doing? I'm doing the viewpoint Opposite. right over there. Oh, the reeds and the reflections. Yep. Have you put some reflections on there yet? You have, haven't you? Yep. Well done, keep going. Such tranquility on the canal side. I think I'd better get started on mine. I'm going to be using uh, chalk pastels for mine. So lots of mess on the fingers, smudging and getting those beautiful tones that I can see on this bridge, along with all the wildlife and everything else that's going on this morning on here. Okay then.
So I've quickly put all the pastel tones down, very abstract, uh, really exaggerated colours for the view that I've got ahead. Um, similarly with Dad, he's also done pretty much the same. <laughs> um, he's got his oil pastels down, marking out the colours, nice sort of movement and texture on there, Dad. Well, yeah, yes, it's a, it's a sort, sort of uh, impressionist scribble, I think is what, how I describe it. So we'll carry on working on these for a short while and then we can uh, put the detail, start to put some of the detail in for this little adventure out in the countryside along the canal in Bromsgrove, right by the Queen's Head. I should ask for some, uh, some free coffee in a minute. <laughs> Oh, hello. I like what you're doing here. You're looking at that view over there, are you? Uh, yes, right over there. So, are you going to be putting some sky in at some point? Because if you look... Yeah, so it'll probably be the last part of it, to be honest. Oh, I think so... you need to blend some of this pencil crane up here. And whatever colour you've got up here, if you look, it's reflected pretty much in the water. Maybe slightly stronger in the water. Okay, if we look just here, it's almost the same. Okay? Mm-hmm. You go. I like the way you're using multimedia. You're using it's a mixture. You've got the right little mixture in that I'm box of yours. I'm doing basically like cross hatching mm -hmm. on the reeds. Oh, cross hatching on the reeds. Lovely. Are you going to use some water with those felt pens as well? I might do. Okay. It depends how, yeah, good and, it looks. And me. you could use some artistic license, couldn't you? You could put those ducks in because I know you're very good at drawing ducks. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the other thing to think about all is what's happening where the water meets the reeds. Is there a bit more sort of movement with some of those reeds lying down? Because if I look over there, I can see some are lying horizontal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You might have a go at doing that. That's one of, of the last things I'm going to be doing as well. Okay then. Because. Good girl. Right, so I'm starting to work the detail in, little bricks around here. Um, th there was some ripples on the canal. Um, so I was using the darker tone, which in my case is a brown because this water's quite murky. Um, and I was just literally flicking the corner of the pastel where I could see the ripples and where the color was echoing. Also, um, there were some highlights and highlights could be done on the water's edge with um, this peach color. Um, I used a bit of white as well. So. I think it's actually ducks that are causing the ripples to happen. Um, but yeah, if you want to get a nice water effect, that is a really nice little technique to just flick the corner of a pastel um, where you see them on the water. Um, also, here I've got texture that I'm starting to build up over these smooth tones that I had as my background colours. Um, and I've got a whole range of greens. I mean, these are quite basic pastels. They're not like the really nice fancy ones I started off with, but you, you can still create the really beautiful tones that you need. So the grass isn't just one tone of green. I can see little bits of darkness and it's literally a texture. Dad talked about artistic license. It's nonsense. You're not gonna count every brick on that bridge and you're not gonna count every little blade of grass. What you're looking for is tonal differences where the grass goes dark, where the grass is light, any shapes that interfere with that and maybe any lighting. Um, I'm a great fan of the fauve painters, if you look them up, the fauves, um, and lighting, and even Kandinsky, when he was painting to music, had a few studies where he'd really play around and uh, add other tones to um, what you'd recognise as basic colours. So his shadows on his pictures were purples and blues. Um, you'll notice I've put some purple um, into my path deliberately to try and encourage those colours to come out um, and to make you look twice as well as the viewer. So I'm going to carry on working. It's going to take a while and we, we only set ourselves a target of an hour, but we're going to carry on working on these and hopefully you'll be able to see them as we get towards the end in whatever state they are. 
So, Dad, what have you been doing? You've got a brush there. What are you doing with that brush and your pastels? Right, well, with the oil pastels, you can uh, use turpentine over them if you want. Uh, and that gives you greater density, it takes away some of the sparkle, but in the shadows you might think you don't want too much sparkle, you want the sparkle in the sunlight. So by getting my brush and washing over, I can get rid of any bits of white coming through, which I think are breaking up the density of the shadows, and I can turn the oil pastel into a sort of paint rather like you could with watercolour crayons and uh, use water instead of, in my case, turps. But uh, yeah, where I want density, that's not a bad way. And it doesn't mean that I can't go back, as I will prove. I can't go back. Uh, I can go back to into that uh, using my oil pastels and uh, yeah, carrying on working. At the moment it's wet, uh, so I'm getting a different sort of mark to what I will get if I waited for it to dry. But uh, there we are. Some of the dark sh reflection that I want on that side of the water, I can do by scrubbing. I'm using blue. Uh, I'm thinking shadows are cool, so I could have used greys and blacks, but um, to get that freshness, uh, I'm using just cool colours, blues, purples, greens, uh, in the shadows. How are you doing, Ola? I'm doing very well, actually. But what I'm doing at the moment is getting the white and chalk pastel. I'm actually making clouds in the sky by using this. Can you see any clouds in the sky, or is it yes, artistic like license? Yes, they're um... Oh, yes, there are. There are. Yeah. I can see them. Very good. And we, I've been putting some like scribbles here to make them um, like to show it's like the water. Uh -huh. What other colours could you use to show that? I as could well? use like a brown maybe. I think you're right, you know. I think you could use brown. I'll leave you to carry on doing that then, darling. Well done. Been here an hour now, our hands are filthy, ugh, and it was on my face a minute ago, um, because I keep doing that. We're gonna call it quits now and go home, and maybe get a nice coffee, if not from over there. Finishing touches then, Dad, on the pastels. Yes, one further technique. Uh, we've tried just using the pastel directly. We've tried uh, using the turps to get it denser. And one other trick, particularly if you've built up the pastels thickly, is that you can actually, rather like scraper board, you can start drawing in with a scribe, or in my case, the point of a knife, and uh, you can draw in. You can take great areas out if you want. I've, I obviously didn't mean that. that. That doesn't do anything there, but it's just illustrating that this pastel can be removed by scratching and scraping which is, is a, another technique which is fun lovely textures it works really well for that water as well dan yeah okay